Good evening, everybody. Good evening to the BNC Club members. Good evening to Janaina Chape uh, from uh, New York and Marc Potier. And Marc uh, is in what you told me where you were, Marc? You were in Buenos Aires or in. Um, no, you're not in Buenos Aires. Uh, unmute yourself, Marc. Uh, you, voilà, voilà, okay, San Paolo. San Paolo, yeah, for, for, yeah. You're in a hotel room in San Paolo, so. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm see, sorry about this. <laughs> <laughs> if you see his bed, don't worry, it's a hotel room. <laughs> 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 and uh, and so uh, we are very happy this evening to uh, to have Mark uh, present us uh, uh, the work of Janaina. Uh, Janaina Chape is an artist that we all love, and I'm sure a lot of you know her work. Uh, she is um, she is German and has has and she has been brought up in Brazil, so that's why we all think she's a Brazilian artist. But she's German and she lives in New York, so it's a very international uh, background. And uh, we all discovered uh, Janaina's uh, paintings at uh, at the at the the, the Galerie Zipas and many exhibitions uh, and uh, soon in the Musée de l'Orangerie. Uh, and Janaina is a very complete artist, very multidisciplinary, uh, painting, drawing, photography, video, sculpture. And, uh, but I'm not going to say more. I'm going to leave Marc Potier that you, uh, that you know now, uh, who is going to present you the work of Janaina, uh, and then we'll have a moment for Q&A. Be, 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 be careful to be muted. And of course, you can have your que questions in the chat box, and we'll answer the questions at the end of the presentation. So thank you again. And Mark, this is your, your, your place now to, to go. So Thank you very much, uh, Anne Claire. It's a, it's a pleasure to have our uh, monthly meeting. Uh, last month it was with uh, Rodrigo Braga, and uh, today it's with uh, with someone that I, I like very much that I knew for a long since a long for a long time because we met in New York uh, many many years uh, ago, and I had, as you will see in this presentation, the great pleasure and honor to work with uh, many many different times. Um, maybe, um, and Pierre, you have been presenting her in a perfect way, uh, but I would love now, uh, uh, Janaina, before uh, presenting uh, the works, uh, telling us ab about, uh, about her, a statement, because you mentioned that she was born, born in München, that it was raised in, in Brazil, that now she's living in New York and traveling quite a lot for exhibitions, and I would love to know how she feels, um, if, she, if, if, if she had to define herself, how she would define her in all this experience all over the world. You, you mentioned that, of course, she, uh, uh, if you go to the article I've been writing, which is on the BNC Club, uh, I've been mentioning, uh, uh, it's very, if, if we need to reduce Janaina in few words, I think I spoke about pleasure because I think this is one of the artists I know that she has so much pleasure when she's working on creating uh, work. I've seen her creating this sort of huge frescoes. And, you know, it's like it's always done with a sort of large smile. And it's something really f which feeds her. And I think it's very typical of, of a workaholic uh, uh, artist. Um, she, she said in the interview uh, I, I have in the BNC Club that she has an int intimate dialogue with Canvas. And I think it's, I would love her before seeing the images to speak about that. And uh, just to conclude before uh, leaving Janena speak that uh, uh, most of her work is based on the observation of nature and that she's working quite a lot uh, doing a bridge between nature and humankind. Uh, Janaina, would you love to comment a little bit uh, this and give us your statement? You need to put, your, to put uh, the sound. Uh, Janaina, you have to unmute you. Yeah, yeah, yeah now. Good. Voilà. Good. 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 Now, now. So, uh, yes, as you said, for me, painting is a huge pleasure and is basically part of my life since I'm very little. You know, I grew up painting and drawing as a form of expression. 
And I think I developed that language more and more into adulthood and it became my profession, which I'm very happy about because I can do what I love doing for my life, for my living. So this is not such a common place to have, you know, and I, I, I recognize that sometimes and I'm, I feel very lucky to be in that position. And I, for me, it's very essential also that continuing my career and developing my career, this is one of my main focus is to keep that intimate dialogue and to keep that passion and that honesty that I have with my work alive. So I think every, as you mentioned before, I work with different materials. I work with a camera, with the brush, with paper, with scissors. Like I use very different elements to express, you know, um, what <clears throat> my work is about at the moment and the process of my work is very important because I think it feeds you know my con continuous observation also with nature and I keep translating that observation and that dialogue that is very intimate and I mean right now I am working a lot in my studio on very large paintings and a the studio which dialogue is in Brooklyn in Brooklyn, New York. My studio is in Brooklyn. Right now we have a snowstorm, so nobody is out, you know, and I'm actually in a skiing right now. So I'm in a little hut. <laughs> You're skiing here, but, in Brooklyn. Um, You're skiing in Brooklyn, right? No, I'm, I'm, I'm skiing in Connecticut, close to okay. the Mass Mocha, actually. Okay. But uh, <laughs> New York is completely shut down at the moment. Okay. So nobody's, it's quite crazy, the weather. But in any way, so, um, what I'm saying is like right now I'm, I'm focusing a lot on, on canvas on very large format and there is a giant challenge for me to sort of understand the giant format, you know, and to have that same intimate relationship that I have with a small drawing book. When I travel, I take a drawing book with me, I take pencils with me, I take little watercolors and I keep sort of a diary of, of, of observations. And for me, the challenge is to have that same intimate relationship with a very large canvas. Or as you said before that you mentioned, you know, a wall painting. Yeah. Because I think for me, that's what I'm striving to sort of accentuate more and more is that kind of like the, the, the not to have fear of, you know, whatever you translate your work with it, that you take it as intimate and as simple as when you do a little sketch. You know, I think that the work has to sort of come out and be as honest and direct as when you sketch an idea and then you sketch an idea in, in, in giant and you fulfill that idea and you keep that intimate sort of relationship, like, I, like you said, with the canvas. Which is a perfect link with the subject that we are going to introduce now, because actually um, the reason of the article which is on the BNC Club was an exhibition which is now at the Musée de l'Orangerie in Paris, which was supposed to finish on February the 15th, but because of the pandemic, I think now it's going to be uh, postponed until May, uh, hopefully. Um, and it was uh, it was very nice, and and uh, the the story of this. Um, of the presentation of uh, Blood on Sea that you are going to describe now, was that in uh, 2014, uh, we have been showing in Brazil El At Pompidou, which was an exhibition made of the collections of women artists from the Pompidou. And uh, um, in the selection, it was like uh, Cécile Debré and Emma Lavigne, that you know quite well, um, has, been, uh, has been selected Blood Sea, um, uh, act, actually a piece from the Pompidou which from 2014 and uh, Cécile Debré seeing this, this piece in Brazil fell totally in love and kept it into her mind and when she has been named to uh, the Musée de l'Orangerie and opening the exhibitions to contemporary art and inviting contemporary artists to, to dialogue with the Monet and the Impressionism uh, exhibition, she invited um, Janaina to, 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 to redo. So Janaina has been adapting, she will tell us better than I, the, this uh, in the Pompidou collection, we speak about four videos, and now it has been reduced to four, three videos. And she was speaking about this 
sketches of drawings uh, you do during uh, trips, which was linked, it's very linked also to what Monet was doing. And in this exhibition uh, that we're going to show to you now, uh, she has been also creating fantastic drawings. So Janaina, could you please tell us about and show to us uh, the images of the Musée de l'Orangerie? Yes. Um, are we, are you listening, are, are you hearing me? No, do I have to go yes. back? You're hearing me? Yes, yes. Okay, and you're seeing the images as well? Now okay. we, see, we, we see webinar. Oh, you don't see the other one? So you need to, to go to the images. I am, on my screen I have the image already. I think you have, uh, uh. it says sharing is paused. Hold on. Are you seeing? Hold uh, on. Let me voilà. try it. Good. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, as as you said, well, this piece, um, titled "Blood Sea," was a piece that um, I did. I was reading Italo Calvino. There is a short story called "Blood Sea," which is a very very beautiful story that basically talks about how we came out of the ocean, how we are made of ocean, basically, that there were these little cells that in order for them to become, you know, to become human, basically, they were little, um, little animals in the water that started crawling out of the water and doing that, they basically kept the ocean in their veins and started breathing outside of the water. And it's a very beautiful little short story that kind of tells us that that journey. So for me, this was an inspiration to that piece. And I found this amazing, strange place in Florida in Wikiwatchee Springs that is an underwater theater where they had mermaid shows in the 60s. It was a roadside attraction at the time. So I took a trip to Florida. I visited the underwater theater, which was um, made around a, a natural water spring. And I created costumes. I created costumes with latex, with fabric, very long, with very long tentacles and with um, balloons. And I kind of built, I always like, the, as the process is very important for me and I cannot know obviously how things are gonna behave underwater. I sort of started, you know, dressing the mermaids up that were working in the theater and stretching those limbs and those tentacles, filling them with air and submerging them into the water. It was quite an interesting process. Also the whole relationship with the professional mermaids that could swim and breathe in the water for up to one hour with a little hose on their mouth. It was quite impressive, but it was very challenging because as it was a natural spring, the water was sort of moving around and twirling around and would take them, you know, to different places and the fabric would wrap up. So I started using little weights and balloon on some ends and understanding the natural movement of the water so I could sort of flow with them in it. And um, so this was the result of it. I made a four screen video piece. So you see there <clears throat> different outfit. Some were floating on top of the surface, some were inside the water. And, um, and I filmed it and created sort of almost like a watercolor that moves. And Maybe here you, you could see, show the other images. Here you can see because we are, we are still, I think, at the, in the first image. Oh, see, that is so strange. I continue here, but it stops every time. Sorry. Uh, uh, okay, so now we, uh, yeah. So, go, so go. let me try again. Yeah. Okay. It always says sharing is paused. No, uh, it, it's still in the first one. So, see. Um, okay, now, 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 now we go to the second one. Maybe, when, maybe I make, when I make it bigger, it says sharing is paused. Ah, okay. There must be something, uh, the host has to enable sharing. Yeah, I have enabled sharing, so it should be okay, but uh, uh, yeah. But every time, 
I but you know, maybe, maybe we can we can stay on this. Uh, yeah. On this form. Because the, the the central image is like it is quite good. So. Uh, okay. Let me try just to make it bigger, maybe. Uh, okay. But it went into play last time. I know, but when it plays, it stops sharing. Oh, strange. Yeah. Well. So here is a key, but let's see if that works. It stopped sharing again, right? Sorry. Bring sharing with you. Hold on. Wait. Let me... is it Does it work now? now? No. Here we see the 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 the, the four image, images. The four, four images. Right, but it's not. Oh shit! <laughs> it's not playing. Sorry, I did this the other day and it worked, but I think there's something that has to be. Do you see it now? No, we see no. you. You see me move. You see it moving now. No, no, we see only you. We don't see any images. Oh. All right, so let me go back here, share screen, here. Voila, so now we are on the image number five. But I think, you know, leave, leave, leave it on, as right. it falls because I, I, th I think it, okay. as it doesn't work. Let, let's keep it. Uh... Right, but the video, it doesn't move though. I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah, so... The, the video, it's a bit complicated to show the films with the, uh, right. Yeah, they, well, they go very slowly, but uh, I will, if you send us a link, you know, I will send to uh, all the participants. Oh, okay. and, I, I, and I think the link must be in the article. Uh, you oh have yeah, the, the site, link no? is in the article. I will, I will share the link in the chat box. Okay. When you well, do here's... the presentation. So, so Jana Inate, tell us how long, how long is your, your, your video? So the how video is, is the... about 15 minutes and it's in a loop. So the four screens are different movies and they sort of interact you know they there's like four different um so to say different water nymphs and they kind of appear in all the screens at some point they're very they're vi different videos but they sort of have a dialogue and i installed when you mentioned the pompidou we did the installation of four screens and you it's kind of like very a submerged feeling. There is a, a sound to the video as well. And I adapted it at the Orangerie to the space because the space was quite particular. So yeah, which is smaller. Mm. Which is smaller and I adapted it to three screens just to also have that same submerged feeling that you are underwater when you are in the space. So that's how it looked like at the Orangerie. And um, we showed that piece in one of the rooms. Now, the, the contrepoint, it's called, this kind of dialogue of a contemporary artist with Monet, is shown in two different rooms. One room is that oval room that you step in when you go to see the, uh, the, the, the Nanfias, which at the time was conceived as a space to be uh, empty, so that the, the the person that goes inside has a air to breathe and has some time to reflect before going into the ninfias. And then this exhibition has the purpose to sort of have a dialogue with the ninfias. So the other space that I occupied is this space, which is that oval space that I just mentioned. And I decided to show drawings and a big, large drawing on canvas because I was very interested in the idea of the drawings and the underlying drawings in Monet's painting. I mean, Monet's painting, especially when you stand a long time in the, in the Nymphias inside that oval space and you start really submerging yourself in the paintings. And what, what I think is also very interesting about this specific, uh, particular paintings of Monet is that for the time, you know, to imagine that he was painting basically without a horizon, because when you go and see the Nymphias, they have no horizon. It's like this complete abstraction almost that you see that those water lilies and this pond, and it's so sort of a different 
for the time being, you know, and that kind of brings us to the video as well, to that dialogue with my video that is underwater where you feel like somehow you don't have a horizon, you don't have a space, you're submerged in the water. Janaina, is it, um, is it uh, the work, the Monet's work, is it something which was inspiring for you long before doing this exhibition at the Orangerie? Or uh, it came up uh, like a sort of gift uh, of life uh, to, to have this confrontation? Is it a work you had already in your mind? I mean, I think Monet was one of the first artists, obviously, you know, growing up that I sort of met the work and was very impressed by the work. And, and also I kept sort of like wondering and I was very interested in Monet, especially also in the, in the dialogue of Monet with American abstract painters, because I think mm -hmm. American abstract painters at some time they discovered Monet again, you know, because of the brushstroke, because of that vibrant sort of underlying gesture of, of his paintings. And I always was very curious about it. And obviously when I got invited for that show, I was so, I was just, it was like a dream, you know? I mean, I think <laughs> to have a show next to Monet is pretty much like to do that and die kind of for an artist, you know? It's like <laughs> the biggest honor possible. So obviously I was very, very flattered, but also very nervous you know, because it is quite a responsibility to show in that space. And I kind of thought that also with the drawings, you know, it was a dialogue with the drawings, with the underlying um, gesture of, of his show, show, show us more, more drawings. Uh, I will more. show you here. Here is the canvas that is in the main wall. That is a very sort of gestural, it's basically crayons, watercolor pencils on canvas. And I really tried to feel myself into that space that I was describing before. And also in relationship to the Blood Sea videos, you know, because also for me, the, the way that the fabric goes in front of the camera and gets, you know, pushed by the water and by, that whole, you know, it's it's very much like creating a, a giant drawing underwater, you know, just with fabric, with balloons, with colors, that the movement of the stream basically creates the drawing. So sort of going into that space, I created that canvas called the sea, which is basically that undertow, you know, that undertow of the sea translated in drawing, in gesture, and I created more sketches, you know, like this one. There's that one. And to me, it's fascinating how drawings, you know, when you come close by, they become so abstract. And once you start stepping away from them, you sort of start creating a landscape, you know, with your eyes, because we always tend to look for a horizon. We tend to sort of, you know, put things together and brush strokes together to create something that we kind of recognize. Because the, a lot the, of the, the one the, this sorry the one you had just before um, it it was quite interesting I don't I don't know if it was on purpose or it's like uh, it, it came like this uh, for me when you see the upper part on the on the on the right it's like a lying heads where you have you know the nose uh, it's, it, you know it's like someone. <laughs> lying and sleeping on, on the drawings. I don't know if it's right, like that. Right, right, right. Now I see it. Now I see it. <laughs> but see, this is for me the fascination of drawing, especially, you, you know, when you create a drawing out of the imagination, you're, mm -hmm. you're sketching thoughts. You're sketching maybe mm -hmm. a moment that you experience in your life or you're sketching colors and, and, and movements that you feel or thought or saw. And, and for each person when you see a, an abstract drawing, you start putting together what you, what you want to see, mm. you know, like, and yeah. that for me is obviously a fascination, like with this one as well. So it was quite 
challenging to create that space because I really wanted this to be sort of still in that same idea that you, you walk into that oval space and you have that moment of contemplation to then make that dialogue with the water lilies, you know, and to walk into that space. Congratulations, because I think you have been succeeding this amazing challenge. Just before we go to the other part of your work, I want just to conclude on the orangerie that Cécile Debray uh, also has been uh, putting a, a work by John Mitchell uh, in the entrance, right. and uh, that she has been, of course, linked to the woman artist. She has been inviting Agnes Turnower to create a sort of sculpture seats uh, that uh, which which is now as a permanent work into the the orangerie. So, um, Janaina, uh, uh, sorry, but Anne Pierre. Yes, sorry, uh, Mark. I wanted to know uh, the, first the size of the drawings, uh, and then if uh, uh, if at the Museum, Musée de l'Orangerie, it's going to be. Uh, I mean, it's multiple invitations to artists. It's the beginning of a cycle. Maybe that's a question for after. But uh. <laughs> now it's a it's a multiple multiple invitation because uh, I think the the next one, uh, as I've been mentioning to the article, would be maybe uh, David Hockney. And then I think it's Ange Litscha, I think is going to do something also. So yeah. it's uh, quite amazing. What's the size of the drawings? Uh, because we had a uh, question uh, from someone. So, so this canvas here, I think now I have to look it up, but that's quite large. That is like about two meters to two and a half. Oh yeah, very big. Okay, but thank this, you. Mm -hmm. But the drawings are smaller. They're more like uh, 40 inches by 50 inches. Okay. All right, thank you. If you have a few here, you know, yeah. maybe you can see a little bit. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Janaina, as we, as we said, you have, uh, I was mentioning your passion for painting and the pleasure you have. I was mentioning uh, that we are going to see the way I've seen you working at the Matarazzo in San Paolo when we have been invited in 2014. So now we are, you have been doing a selection of this sort of uh, amazing public art works. Uh, uh, so maybe let's let's go to yeah. the first one you have been selecting. Here, um, you see, like in progress, be working on a scaffold that is at the Sesc in São Paulo. I was commissioned to do a giant mural for the new cultural center, and this is an image of me working on a scaffold. <laughs> and Think big. <laughs> yes, absolutely, and it's. Uh, I have to say, like I. I do take a lot of pleasure, obviously, in doing those large scale paintings because, I mean, it's not every day that you have a chance to have such a big canvas. You know, no, I you to... had you, you had quite a lot of opportunities, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just like a, you know, you step out of your studio because obviously in my studio, I try to do very large scale canvases, but they're not that big. So it's always mm -hmm. a nice, um, challenge to to get out of the studio and to kind of try to have a dialogue with that size and um, the way I always go about it is actually a very also you know because it is about the process I do believe in that and I do let the space where I am sort of influence what I do so normally I don't do much sketches you know before I start the painting like that I mean I do select a number of colors. I have some images in my head, but I, it's hard for me to, to draw them because it's not about projecting a sketch onto a canvas because I think I have important, to important understand to the size, yeah. you know, because otherwise, I mean, when I did my first mural, which was this one here in South Florida, which is quite large, this is a really, really big um, painting. And I really was trying to study the space, to study the size, to make sketches for it. And I had different sketches. I had pre prepared to make slight projections. I had a number of assistants that were going to help me. So I came down there. This was in 2010. So I went down there with a whole you know, crew and all prepared. And the first day I projected the image on the wall and I had, 
you know, two assistants with me and they were like, so what are we painting? Are we just, you know, tracing and painting? And I looked at it and I said, no, we're not <laughs> doing this. Like, like, turn the projector off. You guys can go get me a beer, get me a sandwich and just leave me here alone for a while. So mm -hmm. I stood there, you know, and I was really trying to understand the size myself because for me, Drawing and painting is a lot about the gesture and understanding the size with your physical ability, you know? So obviously it wasn't about tracing a drawing that I did for a paper like that on the wall to make it big. Cause that, that would be just an illustration of a sketch. And I'm not- How do you- and how do you choose, we have seen before the Guajulio uh, huge wall. Uh, now we see the one, uh, the forest spirit of the University of South Florida. How do you choose the, the, the theme? Why, why have you been choosing to do this uh, forest in, uh, in uh, the South Florida? And why did you choose the other subject in uh, Guajulio in Sao Paulo? This is, the, this is the piece when it was ready in Sao Paulo and it was already open. Well, you know, I mean, the Florida piece, obviously I did, I had spent some time, this is in Tampa and I had gone to Tampa quite a, a number of times. I was working with graphic studio there on prints for a number of years already. And I was always fascinated by the swamp, you know, in south of Florida by the swampy areas, by the humidity, by the rich vegetation. So obviously I kind of embraced that and I took that into account and I did those two murals there. Yeah, so beautiful. this for me was, you know, the memories, my sort of um, dialogue with south of Florida was in a way reflected in these paintings pretty much. And with, with, with the Sesky in Sao Paulo, I mean, I had imagined different things in Sao Paulo, in, in Brazil, same thing there. Well, it's a luscious sort of nature, which always, you know, does impress me a lot. And the way nature sort of also almost is more powerful than the urban, you know, when you walk on the streets and you see those trees sort of bursting the asphalt Mm -hmm. for the for the tree to grow bigger and the way that actually we are overwhelmed a lot with with nature in Brazil you know when it rains too much the streets get flooded in, in the way that nature just like is more powerful mm -hmm. and overtakes the city so I I have those memories in my head and obviously mm -hmm. when I get to the space I sort of I just um, start painting Speaking, speaking of nature, just to, to say to our friends that during the, the first, first part of the pandemic, you have a farm in Minas Gerais in Brazil and you have been uh, spending like some months alone working quite a lot into, into the nature of your farm. Yes, yes, yes. I went, I went in March last year, almost, like, almost a year ago, right, that we started this pandemic life. So when things started up in, um, in New York, you know, and nobody knew anything about the situation, you know, it was all very new and we all thought it would be over in a month, maybe. <laughs> and now it's been a year. But anyway, I did um, pack my bags and I went to the farm in Brazil. It's a, it's a place where my family comes from, from where my mother comes from in Minas Gerais in the mountains. It's a very small town, three, four hours from Rio. And uh, my family has land there always, and my cousins, and I have family that lives on the land, and they're all farmers. And I have a house that I that I built at some point in my life, and I go to, for like, and I think especially in times like that where you don't know where things are taking us, I think going back to nature gives you a big, um, it, it sort of, to me, is a very protective feeling, you know, because I do have chickens there, I have eggs, I have a big vegetable garden. You, you feel very self-sufficient, you know, even if there's no electricity, you have, a, you have ways to live, you know, I may, I, and I mean, I think maybe because my family lived for such a long time there, have been living there for such a long time, and electricity is pretty much a new thing still, you know, internet is a new thing so there are ways of living that 
is very independent and it makes you feel stronger and if it makes you feel more capable to deal with what is going on and i went with my daughter because i, I thought it was also important for her that we are out in nature and that we're living a, a little more like kind of a simple life without consuming so much without needing amazon fresh direct whole foods and doing you know delivery and takeout and creating all that garbage every day so it was pretty special we spent five months there which went by pretty fast and then we went back to new york and the first week i was back in new york i remember just the first day arriving and i had ordered food so we had <laughs> we needed to quarantine at home and in a week we had created more garbage than in five months in my farm yeah. and what you can imagine she, i've been seeing the images you have been posting actually five months but she has been working all day long and uh, you have been doing a lot of work so it's very nice janaina let, let's go to see the images of the matarazzo that uh, uh, we did together I, i like this project because actually it's a very complete project because it's a dialogue in the same room with two videos and uh, and this amazing fresco she did i must say we are crying every day the fact that the purpose of this exhibition was a temporary exhibition and that what you see unfortunately doesn't exist anymore today. Uh, but it was part, part of the game. But uh, I, I think the power of this uh, immersion that you have been proposing to the public was quite right. interesting because it was not a fresco. It was a full work made of two videos and, and a fresco. You want to tell us some words? Yes, absolutely. I'm just going to plug my computer in the power. I just realized I'm running almost low. Sorry. One <laughs> second. We uh, need power. Uh, Mark, maybe you can tell us what was this exhibition uh, you, you, you made? Uh, Uh, this exhibition was a, it was a totally crazy story because of the businessman, French businessman, Alexandre Allard, has been buying uh, uh, an ex-hospital, which, which the name Matarazzo, it's, it's because it's from an Italian family who has been building this hospital for Italian families at the beginning of the last century. And uh, for 20 years, it has been uh, empty because it was uh, out of uh, uh, order. And when he saw, uh, we speak about a three hectares land with a lot of buildings, which are for me more like pal in Italian palacios than, uh, than uh, build hospital. And uh, um, the mayor of San Paolo has been asking him to uh, open it to the public before doing the, the, the works, because this place is going to become a sort of mall and uh, uh, a hotel, uh, restaurants, many, many things. And um, so he said, I'm going to open it to the public, but I'm going to show my passion for the arts. And I'm going to invite uh, many artists to invade the spaces of this uh, ex-hospital. And this is the way we have been inviting uh, 109 artists. Half of them were Brazilians and half of them were international. And, um, and it was really a, a way to speak about uh, what Brazil is about. Uh, a huge country uh, with uh, different cultures and a way to give uh, words also to international artists uh, in love with, with, the, with the Brazil. And uh, it was a, 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 a very nice experience. But now I think uh, Janaina. I was trying to get my electricity going, but I have no idea. I'm really sorry. There is no electricity in here. But I think we have 12, we have, we still have power. Hopefully we won't be cut off. I'm sorry about this. It's weird. I don't know if it's if this you have, phone. If you have Zoom on your phone, you could use your phone as well, but. Uh, All right. Yeah. Well, let's, go, let's go back quickly to the presentation yes. before it so, cuts down. Okay, so let's go here. Let me show you. You can see the screen, yes? Yes, yes. yes. All right. So yeah, for me, the challenge of this one, which was really great, was that the, as Mark has mentioned, it was an old hospital and we had, we were given those spaces to invade those spaces. And that space that I was given had this like amazing wall full of memories, basically, right? I mean, there were layers and layers of 
things on the wall that we don't really know, you know, because it was like from just the layers, there were all this humidity that went into the wall, there were stains. So I tried really to work with the wall so that I could sort of kind of, it was almost like carving. It was almost like unfolding history. So I, I, I painted with a very uh, liquid paint so that the paint would really go inside the wall and be absorbed. I didn't ground the wall all in white to create something new, but I kind of used what the wall had there. It was like really just enhancing the memory of the space. And then I installed those two video pieces um, that were sort of very intriguing images of underwater and above water. And there were some abstract shapes and balloons and sounds of animals of the ocean. And I just opposed them because I think that there was this interesting link of that liquidity of the wall, you know, of that sort of very intense, almost um, storm-like idea of that wall in relationship to the video. And yes, and it's uh, it was a temporary installation, so it doesn't exist there anymore. But we will do a, a new fresco at some point, I think, when the new e building. Exactly, exactly, because you know this project now we have a huge project of a hotel uh, that uh, Jean Nouvel is creating as an architect, and uh, that uh, Philippe Stark uh, is, is involved also, and uh, Jana Ena will do a huge fresco. In, uh, in, a, in one of the public spaces. Where, where, uh, where are the hotels, sorry, Mark? So we it's know. It, or, or, it's, it's in this uh, ex-hospital. Yeah. Oh, uh, OK, 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 OK. In San Paolo. Oh, in San Paolo. OK, good, good, great, great. Right. Wow. Congrats. So, uh, 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 and, and Pierre, tell us, because I, I see that, you know, with Janaina, we could spend two days speaking about her work. Are we good with the hours? Or maybe, maybe Janaina, we go directly to the um, pepper cuts. Uh, right. Um, okay. I think it would be good if we could see some more images of Janaina's presentation because I, I understand she yeah. has a lot of images. Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. asking her. Let's go to the pep pepper cut. Well, this is, a, this is something we, an, another project we did uh, together in the Marina da Gloria in Rio de Janeiro. But I think, you know, uh, let, let's, let's go to, to, the, to, to, to the pepper line because this is another. An, she has, as you can, you can realize, a huge range of works. And uh, I think it's quite interesting to see some of this huge uh, paper cuts she's, she's so, doing. Yeah, so this was a project that we also did together at our Louis Vuitton space in Miami, remember? We did an yeah. installation also with a video and I installed those giant paper cuts, which I sort of I cut out of a piece of paper and then I start unfolding them. and creating an image with the paper itself so yeah, it's we, we spoke we spoke about this because you were doing a huge installation in a lobby in new york and uh, and i think we said uh, as you were working on this paper cuts it was a nice way to, to keep going on with this work there this is the lobby in new york uh, that i yeah. did and this was actually then made out of wood I created the, a paper cut and then we created a wood paper cut exactly the same way with layers of wood and layering them and gluing them together and folding them slowly, which was a very intense uh, amount of work, but it kind of came out really nice. So this is installed in, um, on 6th Avenue in New York. It's a, it's a permanent installation there now. Beautiful. I, I, I have to say that, you know, this project we did together in Miami was thanks to Hervé Mikhailov, that I want to thank, thank him again. How He said, do you have any ideas of Brazilian artists? And I said, of course, yes. And uh, when I said Janaina, he was so happy. So it was like a, a very nice uh, uh, group of friends working together. But uh, Janaina, uh, I'm wrong, am I wrong or did you show at, the, at this past Louis Vuitton in Paris as well? I did. Yes. I did. I had a I remember. Big yes, there was a wonderful show in the Space with Vuitton, and I had a giant painting in that. Giant, show. giant, yes. enormous. Yes. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I would love to show, let me show here one more project where Mark yeah, actually because, because it's important to, to, important to speak about the performances uh, she's doing. And it was the day, and you had the, the plane in the evening, you know, she did a performance and then jump into the plane. <laughs> <laughs> so we think, you know, while I was working on a series of photographs in 2005, I did this um, installation in, in the Parquilage in, in Rio, in where the School of Visual Arts is, they have an amazing forest around it. And I created that giant snake, <laughs> form and I installed it in the woods and I took pictures and then three years ago um, I was asked to create an installation for this project Alalao in Rio and then I basically did a giant version of it and we can Mark helped <laughs> we had a whole truck that arrived in the in Rio with those giant um, cords and forms in red and then we carried it all to the Arpoador and we installed it there and it was quite it was a beautiful thing because also then you know people this is, were this is an important place with it. Uh, uh, this, sorry to interrupt Arpoador you know here what you see it's Ipanema and you are just at the link between Copacabana and Ipanema so you know you're really into what Rio de Janeiro is about and the, the beach you see here it's a very famous beach for surfer and uh, so this is a very key places. And uh, in this image, usually almost every day, people go there to sit, to see the sun getting down. And when the sun is down, everybody's uploading. So it's a very cultural place of Rio de Janeiro. It's very important. It is, it's a really hot spot. I'm just trying to see if any of the, oh, here we go, we go, we have some. We <laughs> electricity. have one plug. They have electricity in America. <laughs> Sorry, so yay. We got it. That's yeah. because Trump is not there anymore. The, the electricity <sighs> came back. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing what's happening. I don't know if you guys heard about Texas and all that. Yeah, I mean, unbelievable. Yeah, anyway. I mean, Houston, it, it's, it's no storm. Yes. So this was, so then I did a video. Um, I, I, I shot it from above. So here you see like a, a drone image. And I just installed this video installation in Sarasota, Florida. I'm having a retrospective there in the museum. And I installed this and I made a new installation with, with the Melantropics, which I actually will show you as well because I have it here and it's quite interesting how it turned out. Um, I think I have it somewhere here. Okay. Sorry. I'm just trying to see if, oh, I don't have it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I thought I had an installation view here because I just installed it again. But I can show you guys something else then because obviously... Uh, Mark, uh, I think I saw some uh, lots of photography of this uh, performance. Is it possible as well? Uh, in exhib exhibitions or at uh, Zipas Gallery? Uh, this, I, I don't know. Uh... Actually, Maybe would... those images. I mean, I did show them in Paris at some point. Yes, you have. I, mm -hmm. I showed with a I showed woman this... in trees and these uh, gigantic uh, oct red octopus, or I don't know how you call it. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 I had. I. I did. Yeah. This was one of them. This one where I basically hanged this cloth, and my friend was sleeping in the tree. That was a performance as well. Mm -hmm. And what do what do they mean for you these perfor for performances? Is it about I mean, for me, women artists, or is it too simplistic to say that? Yeah, I mean, it it is more like this was this is one of the the last um, performances I did, which was in Fiji in the ocean, and I created outfits. And I had people swimming in it and trying to go really deep underwater because it was all based on 
those um, polyps. It's like those uh, eternal polyps. They're like um, they're like these polyps that don't die because obviously in the very deep ocean there are all kinds of sea creatures that we don't know much about. And I was doing some research into them with a friend of mine that is a marine biologist, and we went actually on this amazing trip uh, with TBA 21 and I created different forms and shapes and I put them in the water again. And I mean, for me, those are basically performances. It has more to do with, I think that my interest obviously in the ocean and in underwater creatures and kind of trying to make a link to that universe that has a whole different notion of time, life. As I said before, there's like those um, eternal uh, water creatures, those jellies, those those jellyfishes that never die. And they kind of, they have those polyps that they leave behind and they go underwater and they stay inside. And as there is no daylight, you know, it's always darkness. There is no notion of time. So they are eternal and they can come back to life. And in any way, for me, it's more of trying to make a connection with nature, with a gesture. I mean, I started doing performances just with my own body when I was very young. I did a series of works called A Hundred Little Death, where I was basically laying on the ground in various different places, trying to sort of insert myself in the landscape. And um, at some point I continued working and trying to do extensions of my body, basically, where I started working a lot with latex. And that's where all this different, you know, when we saw those, this is all latex extensions in a way I wanted to connect my body to nature and create a dialogue. I did this whole piece called After the Rain, where you see those sort of balloon shapes and latex tubes that I connected to the water, to lakes. This was in a mine in Brazil. And- um, Maybe and you was... can show us more images of this. Uh... I am showing, oh, you're not- oh, Okay, we, we, we don't no, see. No, we that. don't see. <laughs> oh God, sorry, <laughs> I was showing all these different <laughs> images here, but I guess, let's see. I think yeah. that the connection is not so good. That's why it's very slow. Uh, so you're not seeing my, my shared screen anymore? Uh, we, see, we, we are seeing yeah. the, the performance of the Arquador. We are, we are oh. focusing on that image. Oh, you stayed there. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Let's see. You see this now? Yes, yes. Mm. Okay, so here, this, this actually was from that series After the Rain that I was saying. Oh, so you didn't see any of the polyps in the jellyfish costumes, those? No, no. no. Oh, so all that talk that I did about the jellyfish and the polyps and the uh, water <laughs> was related. No, but we understood because we know we have education, you know. <laughs> I mean, but it was, it was about those creatures, you know, that were called dormant that I did inspired on those jellyfish, on those, um, <laughs> this was but, done. This is one of the latest performances I did. I mean, this is like 2014, where this is from 2003. So uh -huh. I kind of added color and more volume and more fabrics, like trying out different materials as well. But for me, it has, to do a lot with like the, you know, like to go inside the body, the organs, you know, cells and kind of really, I, I love marine biology, obviously. And I mean, I think for a long time, there was always a lot of relationship that were talked about, about, you know, the woman and the female body. And I have to say, I mean, obviously I am a woman and I talk about the female body because I am a woman. But I'm an artist, you know, and I think, for instance, if we um, 
if we talk about Vito Acconci, if we talk about boys, if we talk about Bruce Nauman, we talk about performance, about the human body and not necessarily the male experience, mm -hmm. you know? And I think I talk about the human body and my human body is the one of a woman. And I wanted ha to have the same voice as a human body and not just a female body. And I think we were cornered for a very long time in having to talk about our gender you know, just because it was a novelty that we were actually appearing in the scenario as artists. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, it started to be almost irritating that I was always then pushed into that corner that I'm talking about being a woman. I'm not talking about being a woman. I'm talking about being an artist with the body of a woman. Mm -hmm. You know, like Bruce yeah. Nauman is talking about his performance with his body as a male. And nobody ever talked about Bruce Nauman being talking about being a man in society, just yeah. because it's yeah, talked so about it's, it's normal. So, what do you think about the fact that, for example, uh, I, what I thought it was Camille, Ma Camille Morino made the exhibition Elle at Centre Pompidou, but it seemed that then the exhibition in Brazil was curated by uh, what's her name from the Musée de l'Orangerie. Yeah. Uh, Cécile Debray. Cécile Debray. <laughs> Cécile Debray. But uh, uh, what do you think about the fact that these curators invite you as a as a fem as a as a woman artist and in a way as a feminist artist? I think I am a feminist and I am a woman artist, obviously. Okay. And I think these days, though, unfortunately, we still have to curate shows for women based on gender to have visibility because shows that are curated without restrictions sometimes, then they have 10 male artists and two female artists. And this still happens, unfortunately. And I think that the way, you know, I had many shows at the museum that I love very much in Washington, which is the Museum for Women in the Arts. Yes. And I'm very proud of having shows there, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I think that museum was created to protect, you know, that we appear, that we have a place. And it was created then out of the necessity. And if we are still having shows like that, it's because we still need to have shows like that. And now, and I believe that at some point, eventually, we won't have to do shows that are gender focused or nationality focused to have the space for people to, to have their own voice, you know? I think hopefully that one day all races, ethnicities, cultures, you know, genders will have a voice without having to talk about their situation, but being able to talk about art. And like what think think males did forever. Don't you think it's a good moment for that? I think we are in the good directions and I, and I totally agree with you. I think today people are really aware that you need to, to give more spaces to women artists, to Afro-descendant artists, whatever. But one day, which will be the, the, good, the good day, is, you, know, you will not no more to be a female artist. You will no more be African the descendant artist. Yeah, uh, you will be an artist, and be, which is the most important thing so, which exists. I, I, I really, really hope that this day arrives soon, you know, where, you know, it's not, you know, because they, you know, they didn't call shows where only white male artists were invited a show about white male artists. <laughs> Something to do. <laughs> because it was it was just normal that no, because there was two all... percent there was two percent black in the exhibition. <laughs> so yeah, they I mean just... it's crazy. It's crazy, yeah. you know, like that how now like you know we do show of African artist, you know, we do show a female artist, mm. but we never did show of white male artists because it was just normal that yeah. shows were only white male artists anyway. You know, we didn't have to have a name on top of it. So I hope that one day we can do so. There will be a show where it's all female artists, but it doesn't need to be said that it's all female artists. It's just because they're doing the art that is interesting for that show.
no matter which gender or race this person is, you know, it's about the work so that the, that the shows get curated about the work, you know? And then if it happens that it's all female or if it happens yeah. that they're all Chinese artists, it's because of the, the, the interest of the subject of the show, not- But you, but you know, Janaina, it's very interesting to today, uh, as you may know, I'm going to be the curator of the next Biennale in Curitiba. And I was speaking with a colleague of mine, Marcelo Dantas, who is going to do the uh, uh, Porto Alegre uh, Biennale. And he said, you have to have some Afro-descendants. You need to have some LGBT uh, artists. And I must say, I hate that because me as a curator, I've been always selecting artists because of the works. And I don't right. mind if you are a woman, if you are black, if you are Jewish, if you're gay, I don't mind. I see the works. And today, you know, to have this pressure and, and, and then you feel like if I don't have in my show uh, uh, a minority, uh, I'm going to be criticized. And, and this is also something which is very complicated to, to deal with. It's, uh, it's, I think it's, it's good to, to open doors, but, you know, I think it, it gives for some curators uh, a real pressure, which is, uh, I think, which is not good. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in fact, it's complicated because then, you know, you, but it's, it's, I think it's a moment. It's a moment yeah, yeah, yeah. that might be needed so that we change things around, you know? So we need that moment. It's like why we needed to have a women from a museum for women in the arts or mm -hmm. a show only with female artists because we needed to create a situation mm -hmm. to bring the spotlight on that because otherwise it wasn't given it wasn't the norm so that's why we had those shows that were you know bringing interest to that specific because normally we wouldn't succeed in the competition to be shown or to be seen that's why it took so long i mean it's decades where women were really and it's still the the the, the percentages if you look at the numbers it's still outrageous. Yeah. So I think okay. we, we need those situations to be forced into looking at different art. That's absolutely correct. I'm going just to interrupt you a few minutes because I think that uh, time in, is running and that uh, we, ha we have our number 32 on the presentation. Could, you, could we see? Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been. And and, uh, because she has been, oh, she, she so was... we saw everything. Did we see everything first? I yeah, think yeah. we saw. Are you seeing when I change, that. or are you not seeing when I change? Okay. No, we no, it's good. Show, no, it's good. But maybe you could, yeah, scroll down. The, the yeah, thing. I mean, I was showing those because basically this is the one where I went to the Aquador, you know, in Rio with the last performance. So this was basically. Um, that was the and, last time. And Janaina, tell us, uh, you have a gallery in London? In London, I do not have a gallery, no. I'm not yet. Gonna... <laughs> no, not yet, mm. no. I mean, in Europe, my next show will be in Copenhagen. I have a museum show opening in June, end of June. And it's a two women show. It's uh, me and a painter called Ursula Reuter Christiansen. She used to be my professor when I was studying in Hamburg. She's 78 years old and she's having kind of a comeback like we're seeing happening around now, which is oh, a nice. really interesting uh, thing. And are you still represented by the Galerie Zipas? That was one of the questions in the- In day. Paris, no, I'm not represented by okay. them anymore in Paris, okay. no. I'm represented by Sean Kelly Gallery in, um, in New York. Sean Kelly. Okay, that's a very good and, gallery. And Fortis Diola in Brazil. I have a gallery in Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yargard, that is going to be helping with the show in uh, in New June York. in Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. And I will probably have a show at the gallery in New York in the summer. It's quite new. We don't know yet. We're working on it. It depends on times. You know, with the pandemic, it's hard to plan anything because we don't know where we're heading yet okay so i think we have uh, uh, there i have just one i uh, uh 
is I th I see fingers on the screen, but maybe I don't know if Alexandra. Alexandra, do you want to ask a question? Otherwise, I will ask you how what happens during your performances. What happened during my yes, performance? Because we see we, we see this uh, giant uh, uh, well octopus, and what what do you do during the performances? Do you well, this one was a very organic. I mean, Mark was there for the most part. I think you know we basically yes, yes. we had this truck that arrived close to the beach. We unloaded all this volume of materials and, and snakes, so to say. And then already during unloading, we invited people to help, you know, cause we were not like organized so that we had people like to carry it out. It was supposed to be some sort of like a community project in a way as well. So people just helped carrying all that onto the rocks. And then they were invited just to, you know, use it. So. The kids were jumping on it, as you see here, some little ones. The girls were sunbathing in other pots. And then mm -hmm. eventually, the, the little ones, they started dragging um, the, the red snakes into the water and floating on them. And it was quite a beautiful, beautiful moment when everything disintegrated and sort of invaded the water. And we were filming all happily until the police came and apprehended me and I had to kind of, <laughs> because basically some of the kids didn't know how to swim. They were using them as floaties and they were <laughs> being carried away. So we sent a couple of surfers out to bring them back safely. And at the end of the day, we actually distributed all the material to the community. You know, they could carry it home and we opened up the fabric so that they could have the little balls that were inside to play and not drown with them in the water. So we yeah. had to open them up, but it was quite nice because I like, I like doing performances in a sense where it's not really thought out, you know, the development where you kind of basically you put a situation into a place and you see what happens. And I think that's always like the nicer way to deal with that so that you can really invite people to, to see what they have to say, you know, people that are not necessarily in the art world and how they interact with it and how they, what they say about it, what they think. I mean, this was a, when, when we did this installation, it was a very political moment in Brazil. It was before the elections. And as this is a red installation, you know, I had many people coming up to me saying, is that a Lula performance? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> is that a statement for, for Lula? You know, it was quite interesting how people really, you know, this is like when you throw something out there without imposing some, you know, like how to behave or what you want to say exactly. And when you just, put a visual element out there, a tactile element out there. People interpret the way they want, which I think is the beauty of that kind of performance. That's what kind of brings me to do them also. Um, so thank you, Janine. I, we have a question from Alexandra de Royer. She's in Buenos Aires and she's going to host our next talk actually, actually from Buenos Aires. So <laughs> Alexandra, uh, it's your turn to ask your question. Um, Janina, can can you uh, talk a little about your relation to space uh, and to scale? Uh, because uh, most of your work from fresco uh, installation and paintings are very large scale. Uh, uh, the smaller we saw in this presentation and more intimate was what you did with uh, the dialogue with Monet. So can you can you dig on that on the scale and the space? Yes, in let your me. Work? go back to that slide where you see a little bit. I mean, for me, this case, as, as you know, for a long time, I, my work was very focused on performance because I was interested mm -hmm. in the physical language and how we, how we interact in space, you know, the relationship of the body with the space. And for me, when I went back into painting, very soon I started to feel the need to in a way almost bring a performative element into, you know, where my body was also connected to the canvas, you know, my ability 
to sort of move and to interact in the canvas with the brush, the brush stroke becoming in a way an element that was part of my work. So I think the style is a challenge in that perspective, you know, that basically the size does force me to interact with the camera almost as a, as a, as a physical need to kind of be able to control the size or to, to sort of to, to conquer that size. So I have to use my physical ability to sort of conquer that canvas, that size of the canvas, but with the same intimacy as I do with a little sketch, you know? But I wanted, I think that when you sketch on a very small paper, you know, your brain is connected to your hand and to the paper. And when you sketch on a very large painting, your brain really has to go through your physical ability to connect yourself with the canvas because you obviously need to reach out and move yourself to be able to do a brushstroke that goes from the left hand side to the right hand side in one way you know like it's it's almost an exercise a physical exercise to be able at some point to do that because and not to stop and not to be afraid of the size not to be intimidated by the size so I've been for years, you know, like the scale was sort of growing, you know, and I've been more and more interested, like how, what's my capacity? How can I interact with a, a scale that large? And it's really like, you know, when you are an athlete and you train every day to be able to, to, to hold your breath for that long, you know, or to be able to run for that long, it's a, it's a physical the very physical experience. Can I add? Can I uh, add something on Bill on that? Uh, you you talked about the even the possibility of intimacy when you're doing large scale. Can you dig a little more on that? Well, there is an intimacy because basically you're using your physical ability, your physical body, and I paint alone. Basically, you know, you see me there with an assistant, and it was quite a maybe frustrating for him at the time because he really thought he would be able to paint also but at the mm -hmm. end he was just holding the butt for me and going more you know like moving the card around because i i get uh, <laughs> sometimes i'm afraid of heights so he was moving the trolley up and down and moving to the right on the right because i think it's a very intuitive way you know um the way i move throughout the canvas. So it's really hard for me to translate that to someone else. So I really prefer to do it alone at the same time because it, it, it's, it's how I conquer that canvas, you know? It's like this, and there is this intimacy. It's a, it's a connection, it's almost an intimate connection because you're, you're really going directly from your brain through your body to the canvas. And it's impossible to speak out how to do that, how how forceful you want the brush stroke or how light you want the brush stroke. This is a perception that you create with the dialogue that you have with the painting. And it, it is a very personal one. I think painting is something that is really like a lifelong marriage. You know, I see the painting as my husband, my partner, however you want to call it, you know, because it, it is a everyday conversation and an everyday physical, emotional, observatory. It's a dialogue that happens in very, in, in many layers. And that you kind of, you know, when I was 14, I did my first painting class. I was living in Germany and did my first painting class. And I had this mentor that was an old man. Uh, 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 he was from the Czechoslovakia, I think. And he was like this, he wore a little barret. He was a very like traditional painter, but he taught me one thing that I kind of kept for life. He really said to me, listen, I feel how you love painting. So if you want to have a lifelong relationship with painting, you do have to do it every day. It's like an instrument. It's, it's the painting is like a jealous lover. You cannot stop talking to it, you cannot stop reaching out to it. You have to 
maintain a relationship full on every day so that it doesn't leave you. You know, it's your responsibility to feed that love and to feed that relationship on an everyday basis. And I have to say, I really took that very serious at the time. I was, I, yeah, 14, 15, and I kind of really thought of it as a jealous lover almost, you know, like I needed to write every day, I needed to draw every day, I needed to keep that relationship alive. And I mean, I think for people that play an instrument, they have a similar uh, relationship, you know, with music, you, you have that instrument, it's your passion and you, the better you get at that instrument, the more freedom you have to express yourself, because you, you kind of, you, you know your instrument, you can speak different languages with that instrument, you can reach different places with that instrument. And I, I, it's very similar to painting, you know, the more intimate you are with your brushstroke, with your paint, with your colors, with your canvas, your material, you, the farther you can reach, you know, then you can dare to, to do things that were maybe completely against the rules or to create different paints that, you know, the, or to try different things out because you can move on and it's a lifelong relationship. And I like to think that a painting is never really done. It's the beginning of a new painting. Every time I finish a painting, I'm almost beginning a new one. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful, fantastic yeah. moments. They're fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, I think uh, that we have uh, uh, we have had a fantastic moment of uh, both. Uh, hearing your presentation by, by uh, Marc Potier. Thank you again, Marc. No, thank you to you. It's always uh, fantastic, these moments uh, we have uh, with the, our Brazilian uh, uh, window at the BNC Club, and now, um, and, uh, and also our Argentinian window with uh, Alexandra, and uh, so we- Big have... competition. <laughs> Big competition. <laughs> yeah. Complementarity, not competition. Yes, yeah, sure, not sure, sure. Absolutely, and, absolutely. And also, we all not the right want, word. When when we can, we all want to go back to well to be invited to this hotel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're working on uh, so uh, in uh, is it uh, yeah. in San Paolo Ciudad de Matarazzo exactly exactly yeah. in San Paolo so that's uh, and uh, Janaina thank you so much for your time and and finding electricity as well <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> with us, we so. found it there was one plug working in the whole space yeah, we were all <laughs> All connected, and I hope that uh, you won't be stuck with the with the, the storm. Uh, so uh, anymore, I mean, we think about you. Uh, <laughs> in in London, we are not stuck by the storm, but we're stuck. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. I hope we all get out of this situation. <laughs> yes, so. yes. I think there's a way out, and I hope that there is no more questions. Yeah, there are lots of thank you. Uh, by everybody, uh, fantastic, uh, connected person, so inspiring. Thank you for this beautiful moment of uh, partage. Uh, donc, uh, voilà, uh, beautiful talk, uh, well articulated presentation. We are spoiled. So, mm -hmm. on those words, we're going to say good. Uh, good, good, good evening to all, for which it's it's the evening. And good I'm Pierre. You know, sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. just saying that we, the next meeting we have on the Brazilian windows will be on uh, the 11th of March, and we are going to visit a new space in Itu. Itu, it's near. It's a two, two hours drive by to São Paulo. It's a new art foundation by a, a young man whose name is Marcos Amaro. And uh, we are going to visit this space uh, on March 11th. So we are looking forward to seeing you soon. Exactly. It's not. It's not already on the newsletter. So you're all. Uh, you all. Uh, uh, we all have this uh, fantastic uh, opportunity and information. And thank you again for for su su such beautiful moments.
Trevor. Well, thank Trevor. you all. Thank you all for the pleasure of speaking to you today. And I and, hope. And then, you. Tana, now when it's uh, when it's open at the Musée de l'Orangerie, uh, we will um, organize a visit for those who are in France. And uh, please go see. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully, it will open back up soon. Absolutely. Thank you again. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Janaina. You're welcome.